man. What's going on, YouTube? It's about OGT, man. And uh, today, we got NBA Youngboy Sentence Goodbye Forever. It's crazy by Rap Room. Um, without that being said, let's get into this video. It is. Young boy's legal saga has hit a major twist. The 24-year-old rapper has been hit with a prison sentence. But for those familiar with the Baton Rouge rapper, this latest twist ain't exactly a shocker. Heck, if you're a real fan, he's probably socked you at one of his concerts. This time, <laughs> though, the rapper's sentence comes after. And rapper NBA young boy faces dozens of charges. The feds accused him of using drugs in defiance of court orders while he was under house arrest in Utah. The problem he claimed he had no intentions of stopping. Yet, he can't seem to keep himself out of trouble with legal troubles and gang affiliations casting a shadow over his career. I mean, do you remember when he did this in front of his son? I tell him laugh, bitch, you like a building. Keep watching as we uncover the harrowing truth behind young boy's prison sentence and delve into the reasons that may condemn him to a lifetime behind bars. A lifetime? I heard that that nigga was getting about 49, 69 years. I said, damn, your sons ain't, your children ain't even gonna know you, nigga. Well, some of them know him a little bit, you know, but it, your children you ain't gonna know you, nigga. That's crazy. NBA young boy's legal issues and sentence. Contrell Deshaun Galden, known to the world as NBA young boy, emerged from the streets of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, to become one of the most talked about figures in modern hip hop. Despite his success, young boy's life has been punctuated by legal troubles. Louisiana-based rapper NBA young boy has been arrested in Northern Utah. On April 17th, 2024, armed with months of investigation and a search warrant, federal agents descended upon young boy's home in Utah. Damn. There, they uncovered a substantial yeah, quantity of prescription surgeon. drugs labeled under other individuals' names, as well as a firearm, heightening the gravity of the situation. Federal authorities allege that Young Boy was the mastermind behind a prescription drug ring operating across 11 cities in Utah, illicitly 11? obtaining narcotics from pharmacies. These accusations cast a shadow over the 24-year-old rapper, who now faces a slew of serious charges, including possession of a dangerous weapon in violation of legal restrictions and engaging in a pattern of unlawful activity. Both classified as class two felony charges in addition Damn. to these grave allegations young boy faces a litany of other accusations ranging from attempting to obtain drugs or prescriptions to identity fraud forgery and possession of controlled substances together these charges paint a troubling portrait of legal entanglements however this isn't young boy's first run-in with the law he was already serving strict house arrest following arrest following a gun charge but his legal Damn. issues even go back further in 2014 as a teenager he was arrested for robbery and sent to a juvenile detention detention center in Louisiana. But even within the confines of juvenile detention, young boy's spirit remained unbroken. It was here, amidst the silence of his cell, that the beats and rhymes of his future began to take shape. The young artist The truth is... That's great. You see? Me, y'all, this this one, I'm, this one, I'm affiliate myself with none of that. Hell no. Nah. I want to live my life. Has turned to music as a refuge, penning lyrics that spoke of his struggles and dreams, his aspirations and fears. This stint in detention would be the first of many encounters young boy would have with the criminal justice system, an ominous foreshadowing of the legal labyrinth that awaited him. In 2016, just as his career was gaining momentum, young boy was arrested for two counts of attempted second degree murder. This arrest Damn. stemmed from a drive by shooting incident, a serious charge that threatened to put an end to his burgeoning career before it had truly begun. Gun. The legal system showed no leniency to the young rapper. Young boy was held in a parish jail for six months, awaiting a trial that could have seen him sentenced to a lengthy prison term. The gravity of the situation was palpable, but in a twist of fate, young boy managed to secure a plea deal. He pleaded guilty to a reduced charge of aggravated assault with a firearm, which resulted in a suspended 10-year prison sentence and three years of probation. The conditions of this deal were stringent, including a curfew, community service, and a ban on social media usage. In 2018, while still on probation, young boy was arrested arrested before a concert at the Moon nightclub in Tallahassee. Young boy had a warrant in the state of Georgia for allegedly committing assault, weapons violations, and kidnapping. This nigga just got shit back to back to back. Like, damn. You would've thought this nigga would've calmed down, but nope. That nigga's still going, still thugging right around. Like, this nigga, this nigga's crazy.
Still that same year, young boy's name was once again splashed across headlines, this time for an incident involving his then girlfriend. Surveillance footage from a hotel in Georgia showed young boy assaulting her, an act that not only violated the terms of his probation, but also led to wow. charges of kidnapping wow. and aggravated assault. The legal ramifications were immediate. Young boy was arrested and faced the possibility of his suspended sentence being revoked, which would mean a decade behind bars. The stakes were higher than ever, and the world watched as the young rapper navigated the complexities of the legal system. Despite the severity of the charges, young boy's girlfriend did not press charges. He secured his release from jail, but at the cost of $75,000 in bail, a sum that underscored the gravity yeah. of his situation. As the calendar flipped to 2019, NBA young boy's legal saga continued to unfold with the complexity of a legal thriller. In March, a lawsuit emerged from the shadows, casting a spotlight on an alleged backstage brawl. The plaintiff, claiming roles as bodyguard, tour manager, and DJ for the rappers, accused NBA young boy and Quando Rondo of assault, battery, and emotional distress. The plaintiff, purportedly part of their entourage, alleged a violent backstage encounter during a concert in Florence, South Carolina on December 21st, 2018. What should have been a night of music ended in an alleged melee, leaving the plaintiff with physical injuries, a cracked tooth and a bloodied face, as well as emotional and reputational damage. As if the assault and battery lawsuit weren't enough, May 12th, 2019 marked another grim milestone in Young Boy's legal journey. In Miami, known for its sun and celebration, a shooting thrust the rapper back into the headlines. Young boy on probation at the time found himself in a life or death scenario exchanging gunfire with assailants in a black cadillac escalade the incident left his girlfriend wounded and claimed the life of an innocent bystander though golden wasn't charged for the shooting his presence at the scene with individuals like ben fields and trelondrick boomer norman violated his see see gotta hang around some people who you know have your best interest and want to see you succeed niggas like that gonna keep you in trouble every single time it don't matter what it is every single time special condition the repercussions were swift and severe a judge sentenced young boy to 90 days in jail prohibited him from performing for the next 14 months and placed him under house arrest with electronic monitoring these restrictions dealt a heavy blow to his career and personal life confining him beyond the physical walls of a cell the probation violation was a significant setback but december brought a glimmer of hope as the judge terminated young boy's probation for the attempted murder charges however this reprieve was short-lived five days later he was back on probation for a year after pleading guilty to simple assault in a separate case involving his ex-girlfriend. The year 2020 heralded a new decade, but for NBA Youngboy, it was a continuation of his fraught relationship with the law. On September 28th, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, became the stage for a significant crackdown. Youngboy, along with 15 others, was swept up in a wide-ranging operation that saw charges including distribution and manufacturing of drugs and possession of stolen firearms. His attorney was quick to defend, asserting that there was no evidence of Galden possessing guns or drugs at the time of the arrest. Yet the shadow of suspicion loomed large, and the rapper found himself once again in the glare of the criminal justice spotlight. The saga took a dramatic turn on March 22, 2021, when federal agents in Los Angeles executed a warrant related to the Baton Rouge arrest. The scene unfolded with cinematic intensity as young boy, upon being approached by officers, fled on foot. A manhunt ensued, complete with a police dog search, culminating in young boy's capture and booking on federal firearms charges. The stakes were high, and the bail was set accordingly young boy was released on a 1.5 million dollars bond on october 26 for 75 000 now 1.5 mil i mean i know you wiped you you can make that but damn nigga it's just man, the nigga that's tough 21. The subsequent years were marked by a series of legal maneuvers, including a federal arrest in Los Angeles, a motion to suppress evidence from a music video shoot, and a trial for federal firearm charges. The legal battles were arduous, with victories and defeats on both sides. As the legal saga marched on, the implications for NBA Youngboy's personal life and career were profound. The ongoing battles with the law cast a shadow over his mental health and music sales. Speculation has arisen that his ties to gangs and violence may be at the root of his prolonged legal... Guys, if you're looking to I ain't trying to hear that. We're trying to hear about Baton Rouge. We're trying to hear about NBA crash out. Get out of my screen. Legal trouble. Gang affiliation and deadly feuds. Born October 20th, 1999, in the heart of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, young boy's childhood was a tapestry of hardship and resilience, marked by the absence of like his father, he's who was sentenced to 55 years in prison. Raised by his grandmother in a neighborhood where the specter of poverty loomed large, young boy found solace and expression in music, scribbling rhymes and channeling his experiences into a raw, unfiltered art form. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, a city with a history as rich as it is tumultuous, has long been a breeding ground for a culture of violence that has seeped into the very 
very fabric of its community. It was here that Young Boy's path first crossed with TBG Top Boy Gorilla, a local collective that had emerged from the shadows of the city's gang scene. Founded by the late Lil Ivy, TBG was more than just a label. It was a brotherhood, a rallying cry for those who had known the sting of struggle. Young Boy's association with TBG was a formative chapter in his life, one that would shape his identity and his music. The collective's influence was palpable in his early work as he honed his craft and carved out a space for himself in the local rap scene. But as his star began to rise, so too did tensions within the group. The brotherhood that once stood as a united front began to fracture, and Young Boy found himself at a crossroads. The decision to part ways with TBG and form his own collective NBA Never Broke Again was a bold move that signaled a new era for the young rapper. With his brother and a tight-knit group of friends by his side, Young Boy set out to forge his legacy, one that would not only reflect his ambitions, but also the harsh realities of the environment that had shaped him. However, this transition sparked a rivalry that spilled beyond music and into the streets of Baton Rouge. The fuse was lit in late October 2016 when Keandre Buzilla Ricks, NBA Young Boy's cousin, brazenly taunted members of TBG on Instagram Live. Buzilla's reckless words were not taken lightly, and they set in motion a series of events that would have deadly consequences. On the night of November 1st, Buzilla's mother saw her son, his school uniform prepared for the next day, unaware that these mundane acts were precursors to tragedy. That night, Buzilla received a text from Trelandrick Trishan Norman, a TBG affiliate, beckoning him to a fateful meeting on Nebraska Street. The encounter turned violent when Norman, alongside Monty Wiggins, confronted Buzilla. Words were exchanged, and within moments, Norman fired three shots into Buzilla's torso. As Buzilla lay dying, Wiggins rifled through his pockets, searching for valuables, a final act of indignity to a life slipping away. The news of Buzilla's murder spread quickly, and the streets of Baton Rouge braced for the inevitable response. NBA young boy, consumed by grief and rage, was determined to avenge his cousin's death. A silver Hyundai, now infamous in the annals of the city's criminal history, became the chariot of vengeance. Inside were NBA young boy Derek D. Dog Fields and two others, all ready to exact retribution on TBG. Their search through the night was fruitless, but by the morning of November 2nd, they had a target. On Kentucky Street, mere blocks from where Boozilla was killed, NBA young boy and his accomplice unleashed a hail of bullets on two men, an act of retaliation that would mark a significant escalation in the gang conflict. Baton Rouge became the stage for a series of violent confrontations, with each incident seemingly linked to the growing rift between NBA and TBG. The city was rocked by a string of shootings, each one sending shockwaves through the community and law enforcement. It was during one of these shooting incidents that led to NBA Youngboy's arrest on charges of attempted first-degree murder. Though he would later plead guilty to a reduced charge of aggravated assault with a firearm, the incident was a stark reminder of the stakes at play. The rivalry also claimed the life of local rapper G Money, born Garrick Burton, a rising star in the TBG camp. His death following the release of diss tracks targeting NBA Youngboy was a chilling development that underscored the lethal potential of the beat. The Baton Rouge Police Department, already stretched thin by the city's rising crime rate, found themselves facing a gang war that was spiraling out of control. NBA Youngboy, now a wanted man, faced charges that threatened to derail his burgeoning music career. Yet, even as the law closed in, his popularity continued to rise, with record labels eager to capitalize on his street credibility. Youngboy's gang affiliation is evident not only from his music, but also from his persona and some of his deadly feuds. With a penchant for unapologetic self-expression and a life that reads like a series of dramatic cliffhangers, Young Boy's conflicts with fellow artists and media personalities have not only shaped his career, but have also stirred the pot of the music industry. The tale of NBA Young Boy's feud with King Vaughn is a stark reminder of how quickly artistic rivalry can spiral into real-world tragedy. It all started innocuously enough with what seemed like playful jabs between two rising stars of the hip-hop scene. King Vaughn, hailing from the notorious O Block in Chicago, and NBA Youngboy, the Baton Rouge sensation, began trading insults in the late 2010s. Social media became their battleground, with each artist using their platform to mock the other. King Vaughn, in particular, was vocal about Youngboy's authenticity, questioning the truth behind his lyrics. As the online sparring continued, the tension between the two camps intensified. Fans watched as the feud played out in public view, with each new diss track adding fuel to the fire. The situation reached a boiling point on the night of November 6, 2020, outside an Atlanta nightclub. A confrontation involving Youngboy's associate, Quando Rondo, led to a violent altercation that ended with the untimely death of King Vaughn. The hip-hop community reeled from the news, and the feud took on a somber tone. Youngboy's subsequent release from jail in 2022 saw him drop Bring the Hook, a track from his mixtape Colors that contained blatant disses aimed at King Vaughn and his Chicago roots. This posthumous provocation was met with outrage and sorrow as it disrespected the memory of the fallen artist. Lil Durk, a close ally of King Vaughn and 
a significant figure in the Chicago rap scene, entered the fray with his single, Ah-ha. The song was riddled with hidden messages targeting Youngboy, further entrenching the feud. Dirk's lyrics hinted at a personal angle, bringing Youngboy's ex-girlfriend into the narrative and suggesting she had been involved with King Von. The back and forth continued with Youngboy's I Hate Youngboy, a track that saw him lash out at a host of individuals, including Dirk and his loved ones. The song was a clear indication that the feud had transcended mere artistic rivalry and had become deeply personal. The tragic outcome of this feud serves as a cautionary tale about the potential consequences of such public dispute. NBA Youngboy's conflicts extended to some of King Von's affiliates, including NLE Choppa. This feud emerged against the backdrop of escalating tensions between Youngboy and Lil Durk, with NLE Choppa appearing to take a stance that positioned him against Youngboy. The catalyst for this discord was a tweet from Lil Reese, a King Von affiliate, which downplayed Youngboy's authenticity. NLE Choppa's endorsement of Reese's sentiment with a simple, I stamp that war was enough to draw Youngboy's ire. In response, Youngboy released No Like I Know, a track laden with subliminal disses aimed squarely at NLE Choppa. The lyrics were a no-holds-barred assault, threatening physical violence and dredging up past relationships, specifically mentioning the real Blasian, an ex-girlfriend they both shared. The intensity of Youngboy's words left little room for interpretation. He was incensed by NLE Choppa's public alignment with Dirk and was not about to let it slide without making his feelings known through his music. The track was a stark reminder of the personal nature of hip-hop feuds, where lines between public and private lives are often blurred. NLE Choppa's involvement in the feud added another layer to the complex web of relationships and rivalries within the hip-hop community. It's clear that NBA Youngboy's feud conflicts aren't isolated incidents, but rather interconnected dramas. Many speculate that they stem from gang rivalries, adding a layer of complexity to the narrative. NBA Youngboy's propensity for conflict isn't limited to fellow rappers. It extends to... This shit crazy, y'all. I'm trying to figure out how much he how much he got sentenced though. Sentenced to industry veterans and media That's personalities really like about. Gucci Mane, Joe Budden, and Charlemagne the God. His feud with Gucci Mane, a figure deeply entrenched in hip hop's fabric, began after Youngboy's scathing remarks in "I Hate Youngboy." Youngboy expressed his disillusionment with Gucci following his collaboration with Lil Durk on the track "Rumors," accusing Gucci of siding with his adversary. Gucci Mane, never one to shy away from confrontation, addressed the slight head-on with publicity stunt. In this track, Gucci questioned Youngboy's motives and authenticity, suggesting that the young rapper disdain was more about garnering attention than genuine grievance. Gucci's response was a calculated move, flipping Youngboy's narrative and casting doubt on his intentions. The outro of the song delivered a poignant blow as Gucci flipped Youngboy's own words against him, referencing Youngboy's viral hit Make No Sense to underscore his point. Also feud with Joe Budden unfolded in the public eye, with Budden using his platform to lambast Youngboy's musical output. On his podcast, Budden didn't mince words, labeling Youngboy's music as horrible and questioning the hype surrounding his success. Youngboy's retort came swiftly through social media, where he defended his chart performance and rebuked Budin's criticism. Birdman, the head of Cash Money Records, also weighed in, suggesting Budin lacked wisdom in his approach. Budin's initial stance was unyielding as he doubled down on his critique, asserting his superiority over Youngboy. However, the narrative took an unexpected turn when Budin issued an apology, admitting that his opinions could have been expressed more constructively. Youngboy's reaction to the apology was to dismiss the entire exchange as a publicity stunt, hinting at a possible interview collaboration with Budden, further blurring the lines between genuine conflict and orchestrated drama. Youngboy's clash with Charlemagne that God ignited on January 8, 2024, during an interview with the esteemed hip-hop interviewer Bootleg Kev. Youngboy's candid remarks about his reluctance towards fatherhood, despite having multiple children, sparked controversy, earning him the title of the Donkey of the Day from Charlemagne, host of The Breakfast Club. In retaliation, Youngboy unleashed a diss track titled Act a Donkey, challenging Charlemagne to settle their differences face to face at his Utah residence. However, Charlemagne chose not to directly engage with the track, leading some fans to speculate that fear may have influenced his decision to avoid okay. visiting young boy's home. These feuds, particularly with figures like Gucci Mane and Joe Budden, have had a broader impact on young boy's reputation. They've painted a picture of an artist unafraid to take on any challenger, regardless of their status in the industry. While this brazen attitude has endeared him to fans who value authenticity and boldness, it has also raised questions about the strategic nature of these conflicts. Are they genuine expressions of discontent or are they calculated moves designed to keep young boy's name at the forefront of the cultural conversation what lies ahead for young boy
Right now, young boy is being held without bail in Cash County Jail. His recent arrest has sent shockwaves through the music industry, casting a long shadow over the career of one of its most prolific young stars. With a rap sheet that now includes allegations of running a prescription drug ring, the implications for his career are profound. NBA young boy's legal situation is precarious. The charges he faces are not only numerous, but also serious, carrying the potential for significant prison time. Identity fraud, forgery, and illegal procurement of prescription drugs are charges that speak to a level of criminal sophistication. Moreover, the possession of a firearm by a restricted person adds a layer of complexity to his case, given his history as a convicted felon. The legal system, with its intricate dance of prosecution and defense, now holds young boy's fate in its hands. The broader conversation about artists and their entanglement with the law is reignited with each arrest. Young boy's case is a high-profile example of a recurring theme in the music industry, particularly in the hip-hop genre. The lifestyle that many rappers speak of in their lyrics often includes references to criminal activity substance abuse, and violence. While some argue that these are reflections of the artist's real-life experiences and the environments from which they come, others see a glorification of a lifestyle that can lead to real-world consequences. Where is the line drawn between art and actuality? And how does society navigate the gray areas in between? For NBA Youngboy, the stakes are high. His career, which has been marked by a relentless release of music and a strong connection with his audience, is now at a crossroads. The outcome of his legal battles could determine not only his freedom, but also the future of his musical legacy. The industry watches with bated breath as one of its grapples with the consequences of a life that has straddled the worlds of fame and infamy. However, despite the legal shadows that trail him, Young Boy's diehard fan base seems to be unwavering in the face of controversy. From the outset of his career, Young Boy's music has been imbued with raw authenticity and unfiltered emotion, serving as a window into the trials and tribulations of his upbringing. Tracks like Life Before Fame and 38 Baby resonated deeply with listeners, offering poignant glimpses into the harsh realities of the streets that raised him and the legal battles that threatened to engulf him. The authenticity of Young Boy's lyrics, shaped by a life marked by violence and brushes with the law, struck a resonant chord with fans. They saw in him not just a rapper, but a storyteller who fearlessly articulated the unspoken truths of street life. As his mixtapes circulated and his reputation burgeoned, his legal troubles paradoxically enhanced his appeal, lending credence to the credibility of his words and the authenticity of the life that inspired them. However, the recent legal troubles have had a profound impact on his fans, evoking a range of responses from unwavering loyalty to fervent criticism. Many supporters rallied around him, interpreting his legal troubles as a testament to his authenticity as a rapper who embodies the life he raps about. However, others began to question the influence of his music on impressionable youth and the societal message it conveyed. Despite the legal challenges, Young Boy's music output has been exceptional. Albums like AI Young Boy 2 and 38 Baby 2 showcase his relentless drive and raw talent, serving as a lifeline for both him and his fans who see each release as a triumph over adversity. Yet, with every new track, there seems to be a new headline. Arrests and indictments have become as much a part of his narrative as his chart-topping hits. From Baton Rouge to California, Young Boy has faced charges ranging from firearms violations to drug offenses, his life playing out like a roller coaster with his music as the soundtrack. These legal battles have not only dominated the news, but also shaped the essence of Young Boy's career. His experiences with the law infuse his lyrics with urgency and authenticity, resonating with fans who see their struggles mirrored in his music. Young Boy's interactions with his fan base have also been affected by his legal roles, turning social media into a battleground where supporters and detractors weigh in on his legal developments. Despite the challenges, his fans remain fiercely loyal, using hashtags like HashFreeTop to show support during tough times. The complex relationship between Young Boy's life as an artist and his legal troubles has created a unique bond with his audience. They celebrate his musical achievements while empathizing with his battles, viewing his legal issues as a reflection of a system designed for his failure. His music has become a beacon of hope, inspiring many to persevere despite the odds. As Young Boy navigates through these legal challenges, his career continues to flourish, resonating with fans who see him as a symbol of resilience. Despite the shadows that loom over him, his impact remains undeniable, with a fan base standing strong amidst controversy. Young Boy's journey, marked by a cycle of music and mayhem, has left an indelible... I ain't gonna lie. His fan, ba his fan base is like hella strong. I ain't gonna lie. Them people... Ride for that name. Ride or die. I swear to God. But anyways, this is the end of the video. Um, yeah, knowing all these charges, hope hopefully he can still make some good music. You know, hopefully they don't you know do too much. Hopefully they got him. You know, hopefully his attorney can do what they've been doing. His lawyer and all that. But um, yeah, that shit crazy. Charges eleven cities. Want how much money he had to spend. That shit, that shit. 
no disrespect to him, but that shit don't look worth it to me. I I got some family members who, you know, so I know his stroke, but yeah. This 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 is the main reason why I stay stay to myself. Stay grinding on YouTube. Whew. Yeah, is why I do. But yeah, it's your boy OGT Man signing out. Eat it.